links in, links out, two-way links. Now, my thinking back in 2003, 2004, even up to 2005 was that if you got a lot of incoming links, that's really great, and also that if the links were reciprocal, meaning if it's a professor in Australia linking to me and me back to them, that was a big I score. Is concentrating on getting links in and uh, two-way links still important? Uh, well, the links in part uh, almost constitutes 60% of Google's algorithm now. Okay. And it's not only about, it's got complex over the last couple of years. Right. Uh, it's not only just about how many links you have, but how many quality links you have. Right. Uh, so for quality. A, quality matters, but right. foremost. So, for example, if you can get a, a link off the New York Times, right. that counts 100 times as much as getting a link off the right. you know, university student's blog, for example. Right. So, so you've got to figure out how to get that. Absolutely. And, and that's the, what you call the offline stuff, right? That's the off-page optimization. Off yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Reciprocal linking does not have much value anymore because mm -hmm. now Google sees that you know you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Right. It's not a very credible interchange over there. So, for example, yeah. uh, yourself being an e-commerce professor, you'll have the Globe and Mail when they interview right. link to you, right. but that doesn't necessitate that you need to link back to them. Right. So they're vouching oh, for okay. your credibility. Okay. One way link to count that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, time. Uh, I had said a couple of years ago that simply having your web page up for quite a bit of time makes a big difference for a couple of reasons. One, you just get found longer and other people get to link to you. And that's also one of the reasons why if you're going to hire an SEO specialist, don't delay. Because search engines are less and less efficient at indexing all the content on the web. And so the longer your page can be up, the better. Is that still true? Absolutely true. Uh, in 2005, there were two, about 2.5 two billion searches on Google. Yeah. Now there are 46 billion searches every wow. month. So you can see how it's grown exponentially. Right. Uh, time is valuable for two factors. A, you're losing, you're losing you leave basically leaving money on the table every right. day that you don't optimize. Right. But other than that, there's something known as a Google sandbox, which is uh, right. effectively a period where Google does not let you get all the traffic that is existing for a particular term for a period, a period between one to eight months. Right. So you're not able to realize the value. So every day you delay, you're right. adding on about one to eight months to okay. your full potential. Right. And also in terms of uh, another point of time is, of course, frequency of updating. Yep. If you update your page frequently, does that help your search engine rank? Absolutely, because uh, when you have a, a frequency that is pretty high, so let's say it's your, you're updating weekly right. or monthly at that point, you actually um, you teach the search robot to come back at that point of time. Right. You can actually tell them how, what that frequency is in your site map, right. and they'll come back regularly. The more content it indexes, right. it considers your, your site as fresh. Okay, good. Uh, click popularity. It's kind of like saying, you know, Paris Hilton's popular because she's popular. She's never done anything famous, but, you know, she's popular. So uh, I had said that if you get a lot of people clicking on your website, Google will be able to identify that and therefore determine you're popular. So how do you, is that still true? It, it is, and it's evolved. In and how do, you, how do you get to be popular? How do you get a lot of people clicking? Well, nowadays you have social media. You can go viral really easily. Right. Let's say you have a YouTube because video. Because interesting on. things to be there, people exactly. will look at it. Right. Exactly. Uh, understanding the algorithm. What do we know about the algorithm now in 2009 that we didn't in 2003? Sure. Well, there are lots of different changes since 2008 to 2009 even. Right. There have been 400 different changes in Google's algorithm. Right. So right now in terms of factors, there's just over 200 on-page factors right. and around 200 off-page factors, right. and those dictate uh, how the algorithm keeps changing. But uh, regardless to say, it's like the KFC recipe. Right. Nobody's figured it out. Yeah, but there's a lot of little different tweaking things that are changing all yeah. the time. Um, UPC product codes. I had said about uh, 2005, 2006 that if you typed in digital camera, you would find just too many things. But if you actually looked at the UPC code on the box in the store and typed in that UPC code, you might get four or five hits. Yeah. So I was recommending to people that if you want your stuff to be found, not only include the name of your product and description, but also the UPC number, people start searching on that. Is that right. uh, still current? It, it is, and it's not only um, affecting UPC codes. It's known as the long tail equation. Right. Basically, the more specific you get, let's say you're looking for an HGTV, mm -hmm. and you go Sony, HGTV, BSC, 411, etc. Right. The longer the number of queries you get, right. the more targeted the result will be. Yeah, good point. Uh, blogs. This is something you're familiar with in terms of getting mentioned in blogs. Yeah. How does that pimp up your score? Uh, well, in, in many ways, if people are talking about you, the yeah. only way they can refer you to somebody else right. who, uh, who's, who's reading a blog or such is to link to you. The more links you get, the better your search ranking gets. Right. Uh, and it's not just ranking that is improving, but because more people are using blogs on a daily basis, more people get to discover your content. Right. 
So sometimes, uh, you know, just being mentioned is good. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Checking your index coverage. I mean, you have to be able to know and quantify things. You can't just hold. Yeah. So what are some of the tools that you use? Uh, I use a number of tools. If you check out my browser, it has a, a right. number of tools. But uh, a quick way of checking up your uh, your indexing score is just go into Google, type in site colon and then make the name of the domain. So for Whittaker, it would be site colon Whittaker dot com. Right. And the number that comes up is the number of pages that Google recognizes on Whittaker dot right. com. Now, if that number is less than the actual pages you have, then there's other things you can do to take Absolutely. care of it. Like yes. Submit the URL to those other pages. Um, WAP enabled. I was thinking about this in 2006 to try to make your pages be able to be found by Google's version uh, that more people are using in Palm Pilots and Blackberries and things. What do you think about that? Well, WAP right now is more of an outdated standard given that a lot of phones are 3G, for example. Exactly. So what's all the rage right now is making sure you have a mobile-friendly version of your site right. that is good for either the Blackberry or the iPhone. Right. For example, if you have a phone number in your meta description right. and you're browsing on your iPhone, that phone number becomes a clickable link. If you yeah. click it, your iPhone will automatically call that phone number. Yes. Great, great. And in terms of analytical tools, Google Analytics, I mean, yep. obviously they're pushing that because, you know, that's their product, but uh, how useful do you find that? I use analytic, Google Analytics for all my clients. It's a great tool, and they've, uh, they've put in a lot of enterprise features. They great. keep innovating on it. But uh, aside from analytics, there's also other tools. If you ever go work for the Fortune 500, mm -hmm. uh, you'll, you'll basically work with tools like ClickTracks and Omniture. Right. Uh, they pay a, a ton for these products, and it takes time to learn how to use them. Right. But you can get some really nifty data off it. Okay. I want to thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Appreciate that.